Hello, beautiful souls. How are you today? It's a glorious Monday. I mean, you know, power of positive thinking, right? It actually is. The weather is a little cooler here. It's been sunny and I'm very grateful. Today, we're going to talk about starseed children, starseeds in general. And I want to start out with a couple of things you may or may not know. So there's a lot of different terms that get used and thrown around for star seeds. You may have heard indigos, diamond, golden, crystal, rainbow, <laughs> um, the OG. That's like the first wave that came in, you know, back in the 60s and 70s. Um, but we are all of different and various star systems. So star seeds is a term that's easily misrepresented and misunderstood. Um, there are star systems, there are planets that are very, very small and are misidentified by those, you know, expert scientists as stars, but they're actually planets. And so um, the, the common theme is it's a volunteer mission, 100%. So the types of star seeds actually correlate to their soul origin um, star system. Star seeds are conduits between the divine realms and earth because earth is what? It's earth school. It's where souls come to get more opportunity to to um grow and evolve and yes have hardship because this planet provides so many but in doing so a soul can evolve a soul can create their co-create an existence that is always motivating and moving forward so opportunities are presented via soul contracts opportunities are presented via other people's free will choice and that soul has choices free will choices to um elect the higher timeline the higher consciousness decision or not and oftentimes in very early age star seeds will not make sense to their immediate family their community the school they really do not fit in to, quote unquote, the norm. Some of the more popular star systems that send star seeds here, I'm going to run through some of them now. Syrian star seeds hail from Sirius star cluster. That's Sirius A, Sirius B, and Sirius C. There you have a uh, water planet. And then you have the Lion Collective. And then on Sirius C, that's like the Cosmic Police. Um, they're, they have agreed and accepted to be basically the, the Cosmic Police Force of the Cosmos. Then you have the, um, probably one of the more popular star seed systems is the Pleiadians. They hail from the Pleiades star cluster, also known as the Seven Sisters. And they have the traits of being very loving and creative. They come from a matriarchal society. So their entire society really relishes and is an honor of the divine feminine, the, um, the family unit, children. They understand in the now moment how important that is. They don't spend their days thinking about past events that can't be changed or future events that have not yet happened. They just give their positive high, high consciousness energy into the now. Arcturian star seeds, that would be me, hail from the Arcturus star, which is the brightest star in the Boots constellation. And we are... As a starseed group, very mentally and emotionally advanced. And most of us are spiritual and energy healers, like myself. The Andromedans hail from the Andromeda galaxy. They're peaceful, loving, and often skilled in the sciences. Then you have the Orions from the Orion constellation. Now, I want to say Orion at times gets a bad rap 
because of the malevolent ones that came from the Orion system, which are the Draco. But I will say in every single race, um, outer space races and on this planet, there's good and bad and all. So don't be judging. You want to, in life, to be in alignment with Christ consciousness and unity consciousness is that you're not judging a being from their race, their color, what they look like, or where they come from, right? It's on their energy, and it's on their actions, and their intentions, and their heart. And so if that's been a trial for you, that's where you would definitely have some shadow work to do. Um, Orions have very deep research science and detail oriented characteristics um many of the early civilizations that you see with structures aligned to orion they were assisted by orion star seeds and orion aliens in the time of their inception and so they honor them as star gods the indigos the crystals and the rainbows now those are more recent um, arrivals in the starseed group they all have really similar characteristics they all have the propensity to have psychic abilities clairvoyance telepathy energy cleansing and they arrive with full 5d frequency and all of their dna is activated so if you're you know like in your 50s like me you're working on or you have been working on activating everything that was dormant in you these star seeds arrive with everything activated indigos are infused with archangel michael's power crystals are infused with archangel gabriel's light and rainbows they have all of it they have archangel michael they have archangel gabriel's and they have many other angels that have given to them their special abilities overall light workers star seeds way showers they all arrive by birth or by walk-in with higher consciousness, clear abilities. It's not just clairvoyant, it's clairsentient, which is you feel it in your body. Claircognizant, which is my strongest ability where information just drops into your being and you just know it. I know it like I have, you know, this nose on my face. Um, clairfactant, where you smell. And clairaudient, where you hear. So it's many, many clairs. Those are just the top top five. Um, they're, they are well aware we, we become well aware that we're on a divinely guided mission to assist humanity to evolve. And then we are fully motivated to spread love and kindness to all that we encounter. Uh, we 100% volunteer for this mission. So at some point in time, our souls raised our hand and said, yes, we want to do this earth school thing so that we can help humanity evolve. And as star seeds, we navigate the lower frequency that Earth was when we arrived here, um, usually in solitude, usually in isolation because we don't fit in. We don't fit into our family, our Earth family. We don't fit into our school. We don't fit into our community. Um, really, everything around us feels very foreign because it is. And even though when we're surrounded by our quote unquote family, we feel alone because we don't have anything in common with them those are very common starseed traits that that we hear about over and over and over again and it's often related like as a re reverse black sheep thing and i used to say that about myself all the time like i'm the reverse black sheep i'm the one that went to college out of four i'm the one that left home out of four <laughs> um and i'm the one that they could give two shits about like they you know it's just like oh she's here anyway lfg and that but it's just a common thread where no matter what you do in benevolence it's looked down upon it's just totally misunderstood now we have come a long way in frequency um the planet is in a much better vibratory state with that higher frequency and so benevolent actions are seen as and felt as benevolent actions now and it's much much um better received but still can be contentious and cause friction it depends on who's around you uh, because those that cannot be in higher frequency or around higher frequency are very uncomfortable in that state in that moment and so you definitely will still feel that um the feelings that 
star seeds have those clear abilities open us up energetically to receive um, other people's energy and to sense other people's thoughts and feelings and toxic emotions. And that can be a lot and it can be a lot, no matter what your chronological age is, it's just a lot for the energy body to, um, to have to defend on a day-to-day basis. So navigating those feelings tend to make or break the star seed. So uh, the empathic star seed has such a hurdle to get over, to realize, number one, you volunteered for this shit. (laughs) And then to realize how much you have within you that seems and feels very, very normal, where others have no concept of it. And then to try to bring them up to meet you without going too low to connect with them, right? It's definitely a dance. And uh, we don't want any starseed to lose themselves and lose the the light of themselves um, because of the connections to those around them that are not of the light. And so uh, it's a make or break moment, you know, to be an empathic starseed and feel and sense and have to, Um, process all this energy that's coming not from within but from your immediate surroundings and then continue to still stick with it and still do the work or the greater good and still work to enhance life for humanity so when we are dealing with all the things that flood our energy as an empathic star seed, we have to determine what energetic boundaries are. We have to navigate empathy apart from sympathy. Um, we become energy alchemists. So there are some people that we engage with and we just know that we need to transmute that energy as, as quickly as possible. Um, we develop a deep resonance with nature. Like when, when it's super chaotic around us and we're absorbing all that, the best thing to do is get outside get your feet on the ground and give it to mother earth and let her transmute that energy into love and light. We do become self-motivated with our spiritual dialogue through our clear abilities. So, um, if a day goes by where, I'm not receiving my messages like I normally do. I feel very disconnected and untethered. It's really very important for me to stay in communication with my guides now that I have that. And we understand the detriment of not giving ourselves self-care becomes a part, you know, it, it really is shown to us when we go through our QET session and we we see how much we've allowed toxic energy to change us and how we feel. And then we realize what clear feels like. And then we go, Oh, this is awesome. We're going to be motivated to keep this. And that motivates you to enforce your healthy energy, energetic boundaries. And then we definitely strive to transcend duality to oneness. Um, so how do you know if you're a star seat? The most common thing is that you resonate with everything I've said, you resonate whenever you hear a star seed speak or whenever you deliver, you receive a message that's been delivered for star seeds. And it, you're just like, that's me. Like that's a hundred percent me. Don't let your ego mind talk you out of it. It is a hundred percent you. So what would you do if you have a star seed child and you're not exactly what you would call enlightened or up to speed on all the different types of star seeds and what they mean and why they're here and why are they so different? Why don't they fit in? Well, today I have the pleasure of introducing you to a very special mom and daughter. And mom is a star seed who then received a very special star seed child. And so we will hear from them a firsthand perspective of what life is like as a mom and daughter starseed in a world that really doesn't understand starseeds very well. So our mom and daughter duo are not using their real names, nor will they be showing their faces. And that's completely understandable. But what they have to share with you is absolutely authentic, sovereign truth 
from their heart. And they agreed to do this bit of an interview because I think it's widely misunderstood what it means to be a star seed and really the impact of raising a star seed without causing harm or trauma is very important for us to understand. So without any further ado, I want to introduce Aurelia and her daughter, Love. Love, are you with us? Yes. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm going to just start with a few um, a few questions. And these, uh, to the audience, these questions were really um, developed by Love and Aurelia herself. Uh, I had just added a few to the very bottom of the list. And so let's get into it. So Love, tell me about what you know and think and feel about unicorns and dragons. I feel like they're very awesome. And they help a lot for people. They protect both dragons blow fire at bad. Unicorns protect just like dragons. And they are so awesome. I agree. Now, do you have um, a few unicorns or one unicorn or like what's in your what's in your spirit team? Do you have unicorns and dragons? Tell us about that. Yes, I have a lot of unicorns and dragons protecting me. Okay. And do you talk to all of them or you just know that they're there? I talk to most of them and I know that they are there. And you know they're there because how? Do you see them? No, I just sense them. You sense them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you see them all or do you only see some or do you not see any? I only see some, mostly okay. unicorns. Okay. So you see mostly the unicorns. Yes. Okay. And then um, you have a favorite dragon or a favorite unicorn? No, I love them all and like them all equally. That's an awesome answer. I love that. I have a lot of unicorns and dragons too. And I don't even know all their names. There's so many of them, but I do talk to them all the time. So I completely, I completely resonate with that. Okay. Now, what do you observe today in the world that you think about, that you contemplate, that makes you go, hmm, is there anything? No, not really. Okay. Mom, do you have anything to add to that? I'd love her to share what she sees in the clouds, in the sky when she looks outside many days. Can you expand on that a little bit? I see sometimes the clouds form in unicorns and angels. And sometimes I'll see an angel flying in the clouds. And sometimes I'll find a unicorn. Okay. Now, yeah, I know when I'm outside, sometimes I'm asking, having conversations with my spirit team and talking to different ones. And I seem to get a little bit of communication via the clouds. Do you see that at all? Yeah, I do. Cool. I'll see, I'll see a lot of different colors in the sky. Um, I've seen rainbow hearts before and different colors, gold and sparkles. I see a lot in the clouds. When you look at the sky, what colors do you see? Sometimes just white if there are clouds out or just blue sky. <laughs> okay. And other times a lot of colors. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I think lately I've started to see different colors in the sky. I don't know that everyone's seeing them. That's why I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. Okay, today is August 12th, 2024. What is awesome in your world today? 
a yellow butterfly came by me. And Good. it was very slow around me mm-hmm. while I was walking. The visitor. Mm-hmm. Did you talk visitor. to it? Yes. Did it respond? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't hear a response, but I enjoyed talking to it. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. I have found that I'm much more appreciative of all the butterflies and bees and dragonflies outside now than I used to be. Yes. We see a lot of dragonflies and butterflies here. Yes. I I didn't hear that. Every time. We see a lot of dragonflies and butterflies here. Yes. Yes. Every time I'm outside, there's either at least one dragonfly or a lot of dragonflies. (laughs) I think they may show up more whenever you're outside. What do you think? I do. Yeah. Okay, next question. What are your Claire abilities? I can hear stuff from other dimensions, and I can hear stuff from my team. Okay, so you have Claire Audient. You can hear from your team and in other dimensions. And I see stuff in my brain. Okay, so you're clairvoyant. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have feelings that come to me, and I can sense a lot of stuff around. Okay. Okay, so that's Claire Sentient. So that's three of the big five. That's awesome. Now tell me what challenges... Do you face having all those sensations of your clear abilities? Oh, don't really know which. Like sometimes it's easiest Mm -hmm. to not see things. Sometimes it's, it's difficult when the universe shows us things that we're supposed to um, help or make better, but that's kind of a difficult situation. How do you handle that? I ask my mom for help and I ask my team for help. I ask unicorns and dragons for help as well. Okay. Was it always that way? Did you always sense a lot of energy around you and were you always able to talk to your mom about it? No, I didn't always sense it. How long has it been something that you've been really sensitive to? Three years about. Okay. And you are how old in earth years? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Wow. So five at five years of age, you were receiving all this stuff. And at the time... Did you talk to mom about it or did you feel comfortable talking to your mom about it? No, because I didn't know what it really was, but I started sensing it a lot. Okay. Do you recall anything that really changed that that made it better or made it worse? No, not really. Okay. All right. Do you see having these clear abilities as a gift or a burden? A gift. Me too. Me too. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to hear you say that. <laughs> Who is your favorite guides? So out of the angels, the archangels, family members, unicorns, dragons, doesn't matter. Who is your favorite guides? I don't really have one. Okay, so your go-to guide, the one you tend to talk to most, who's that? Archangel Michael Metron. Okay, awesome. And they're always right there with you, right? Yes. Yeah. So do you want to talk about your relationship, your friendship, your love for Yeshua and Maggie? No, not really. Okay. Mom, you want to chime in on that? Yeshua and Maggie, where to begin? Um, (laughs) They are awesome. 
and they are always here with us, willing to help. And they're one, I think, of our strongest guides personally within our family. Um, we have a great relationship with both of them and through this relationship have learned many truths versus what's being told to the right. world. Right, right. So I'm right. very grateful for that and yeah. being able to experience the truths and learn them at a younger age for her. Awesome. So as the truths came in for you, um, at what point did you decide to share it with, um, well, with love, but also with your, the rest of your family, or did you? I followed her cues. She has one who, from the beginning, I've just looked in her eyes and thought, she can see so much more. There's a lot going on here. And she's always talked about unicorns. And with the idea that so many say of, oh, little ones have an imagination, just tell them the truth. I thought, no, instead, I'm going to let her show me. I'm going to keep going with her and allowing this and saying, hey, unicorns, they're great. Let's roll with it. Mm -hmm. And through that, I've been able to see further. She has taught me so much. Um, and so going back to your question there about the truth, I've followed her lead. When she's asking questions about different things, I think, well, who am I talking to, the old soul or my daughter? And I have to find a balance there. And sometimes the balance surprises me with what she's ready to hear. And yeah. other times, yeah, you know, mama's got to filter some things and just be very, very basic um, and see how it's received. But that, I think that's probably the, the biggest gift that she has provided for me. And also one of the biggest learning curves mm -hmm. is simply being aware and allowing and following her lead. I certainly don't know it all. Yeah. If I allow her to show me, she's going to teach us a lot. Um, as far as sharing truths with others, I have a little bit. I've not fully out come out and said, hey, this is this and that is that, and there you go. Mm -hmm. But I've dropped seeds. I mention things. I comment on things. I we We do a lot there to kind of warm it up, if you will. So it's yeah. not complete blast of surprise. Right. So when you're receiving and allowing her to kind of guide things, do you feel more of a mom or do you feel more of a star seed yourself? You know, until recently, I never considered myself a star seed. It was a term I've heard and I like, but I haven't embraced it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those, oh, let me look into that more. That's starting to resonate a little more with the idea and go, oh, wait, they're talking about me? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find it's it's a de it's a delicate balance. You know, um, my children are not young. They're adult, but still, um, it's a delicate balance on, on what they're ready to hear and what you're ready to actually say. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. I think that's going to be helpful insight for many. It really is. I appreciate this opportunity. I'm learning every moment, as you know. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say, this is for mom, what would you say are like the top three challenges of mothering an empathic starseed? Um, and continuing to release myself from the matrix programming. And follow her lead. That would be one. Yeah. Um, realizing that anything and anything can hit at any time. And I know that sounds dramatic, but you can be going along and then suddenly something doesn't seem right. There's a, a, a negative feeling comes across or physically something doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. And so learning to change that from oh, what's wrong? What happened to, well, let's identify what that feeling is and where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is it personal to you or is it coming from an external source and working through it that way? Those would probably be the top two. As far as the third one, 
I don't have a third one off the, at this moment. It may come to me later, but those feel, would be the biggest ones. Yeah. And I feel like probably the crux of, well, of all of it is, do you, are you dismissive to what comes to you from your starseed child? Mm -hmm. Are you embracing? And you sound like you're very, you know, embracing of that. Have you encountered um, being with her and she shares something with someone else who's dismissive. How do you handle that? Yes. And no, um, I've never, we don't get around a ton of people in general, but I haven't seen her be fully dismissed with my eyes. I have seen things with an attitude of, oh, okay, she's a child and it's her imagination. And yes, that is a level of dismissal. Mm -hmm. So in that, I do my best to come through with honesty and support on both sides, realizing that the one side hearing things isn't quite there yet. Right. But my daughter is, and she's speaking right. her truth. Right. And so in that so kind of providing a bridge for both sides, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I bring that up because in general, you know, home is a safe space. Home is where you can say things that you can't say things, you know, say elsewhere. And it, it's really a comfort zone or it should be. But then when you get out and the community birthday parties, you know, whatever you're doing, shopping and that truth ebbs out. And then I feel like there's a lot of, you know, predictive programming or whatever programming from the matrix, um, uh, like of our parents who would, you know, say, you know, Oh, you know, stop saying stuff like that. That's not true. Or wants to squash it. And, um, I would be, if I had a little one right now in this now moment, I think I'd be really protective of that energy that she has, because it takes just one comment, one, one flippant comment from a person, I think that could really derail an energy being like that. That's really learning and feeling so much in this space. So I definitely applaud you for that, wanting to bridge the two, but support her, um, her abilities and her gifts, no matter where you are, whether it's home or outside of home. I think that's super important. And that what you said is 100% true you know it can just take one comment to squash but also she's protective of herself she filters a lot she says on her own um because she senses pe the people around her the recipient and so she may say a comment or two and then she started standing up more for herself with it when somebody says oh that's not true she says well you might not believe that but it is true or awesome. something to that effect so well, you go girl yeah yeah you know, life would have been so much easier if we had that gumption when we were little. <laughs> I mean, right? It took us so long to wake up because we were just <laughs> beat down so many times. Uh, okay, so this has been great, love. Do you have a last comment for the the audience that's watching your Star Siege video? Hmm think for a second <laughs> yeah and I'm gonna ask mom the same thing so you can <laughs> you can both come up with your your information your good comments in the meantime I'm gonna give you all a couple of things to think about when we first started this journey I really felt um very called to find all of my soul family members which I did and, um, then uh, connecting to some of them, I realized that it was also their children who had soul family souls with them. And not only the, the development of that child as a higher consciousness being, but also embracing their abilities. And it came to me, um, that they would benefit from a QET session, although I had never asked for permission. So I asked for permission from Mother Sophia and love was the very first child QET session that I did. And it made a huge difference in her life. 
um, just I think in general. And so if you have a empathic star seed child or grandchild or someone in your family that you really feel um, this would help. What I want to impart to you is that that energy body, the soul that comes into the being is usually a very old soul. And those energy bodies have distortions from prior lives, prior incarnations, all sorts of trauma that we've all gone through. So My humble opinion is don't wait till you're an adult and you've accumulated so much that you have so much more shroud of work to go through. Let's get them cleared and taught the truth earlier on so they can navigate the energies as they come through because they're heavy and they're getting heavier and they're getting bigger and there's lots more truth coming out. And so the more um, authentic and sovereign beings we have functioning, no matter what their chronological earth age is the better our planet will be. So if this is something that totally resonates with you, please visit violetlotusenergy.com and look at our services there. When you get to the QET section, there's two prices and the lower price is actually for the children. They do tend to have a lot, but not as much as the adults. And so there's a bit of a discount on the the child QET session, but this is exactly how um, I encountered love for the first time. Are you guys ready with your answers now? I think we are. You wanted a roundup response, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So mine as mama is to make sure to do your own work. There are not only will you have your own shadows and things to heal and they come layers by layers, but when your beautiful child comes asking you questions and needing your assistance, you're going to find more. So my advice is to embrace it, love it, have full gratitude for the opportunity and roll with it. Awesome. And now it's love's turn. She's ready. We're ready. Okay, my turn. Even if this is for our children, even if you're being bullied, at school or even at home. Don't let any of it take your vibe down. Always have a high vibe. Just look at them and go, whatever. I do not care. (laughs) Don't let it drop your light and vibe. That's awesome. She she felt very led right there. She said, mom, I want to mention being bullied. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's a big deal. And, and the thing about bullies is they back down as soon as you stand in your truth. So definitely owning who and what you are is a really big step to making those bullies go away. Because the bullies are really just cowards. And they need truth and they need strength to back down. So I thank you, love, for being courageous and standing in your truth and speaking it and sharing what it's like to be an empathic star seed in this now moment. And thank you, Aurelia, for raising such a beautiful, amazing star seed child and being amazing in your right, in your own right. And um, thank you so much for accepting the invitation to share your truth today. Lucy, we appreciate the opportunity and love um, just said, I have one more thing, mom. Okay. Okay. Have a minute. Okay. Yeah. If people are mean to you, that's just a reflection of themselves, not you. Wise words. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I love you. And I'm glad that um, you chose love for your name because it really does (laughs) represent exactly how much energy you give off. It's always love and it's always light. So. We're going to wrap things up now and please check out violetlotusenergy.com. I also have a book on Amazon called sold or soulless with lots of information there. And I drop a podcast every Friday morning at 6 a.m. called truth resonates. Stop by and see what resonates for you. We'll talk to you again later. Take care. Bye. Bye. Love (laughs) y'all.